I am joined by Vanuatu International, Mitch Cooper. Thank you for joining me, Mitch. What's happening? Now, pleasure to be here. Where did your love and passion for football first start? Uh, it, it just started, um, you know, back in Van- Vanuatu, where I was born and raised. Um, you know, it's, a, it's pretty humble over there. It's, you don't really aspire, um, you know, too much to, to hit those professional levels. You're just out there just enjoying yourself with your friends and, um, and around ball and, and your bare feet, nothing else. So um, my love of that, you know, just uh, the pure enjoyment, you know, um, getting out every Saturday. There were no clubs in Vanuatu. Um, so every Saturday it was just like a get together. All the, all the kids, um, you know, local kids as well, some villages. And um, it was run by uh, two American coaches at the time. So it was just a game, all ages. So that was, um, you know, the very fond memories, you know, growing up in the islands there and, and kicking a ball um, socially. That That's definitely how it started. And, um I guess I was, you know, my talent was uh, was good enough to to take me to to different places and high levels with the game and um, and my love, you know, further developed from there. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. And did you have any like football idols or favorite players growing up? If so, who were they? Um, uh, Vanuatu is a, a French colonized um, country, so France was massive. So you know. Zizou, Zidane, um, Thierry, um, all these players were definitely players I looked up to, um, in, especially in that, in that World Cup period where France were, were pretty dominant. Um, but I didn't – oh, my dad's English. I actually remember um, watching England as well in the World Cup. They didn't do too well, but, you know, the likes of David Beckham, um, Heskey and stuff, so the, the gold nearer then um, – you know, with those names, those big names, it was, yeah, they were probably the names that, um, you know, I followed the most as, as a younger, young boy. Um, but my, my middle name um, is Baggio, um, after Roberto Baggio. Um, in the 1994 World Cup, the year I was born, um, you know, Vanuatu, the nation was watching the World Cup and Roberto Baggio killed at that tournament, but, but missed the penalty. And for some reason, my uncle started giving me that name so um yeah Baggio as well was probably the biggest player I grew up following and uh you know loving too well my next question was going to be whether or not that was your actual middle name or someone just yeah (laughs) it is crazy man it is like people think I'm Italian um or if you don't know they'll you know people look at my passport and be like who's Baggio what's what's Baggio (laughs) I'm like you know Obviously, you watch soccer. <laughs> now, on to your um, professional football career. So you come through the youth academies of Gold Coast United and the QAS, and then you made the step up to Gold Coast United. And for your first game, I'm sure you know where I'm going with this one. Clive Palmer decided he wanted to make you, at 17, the captain of the club. So firstly, how long before you actually played the match did you know that you were not only going to get your debut, but you were going to be made captain. Um, it, it was it was the week of the game, um, the week prior, before leading up to that game. Um, you know, our youth team was was right up there. Um, I think it was called, yeah, the National Youth League at that stage. And it was more of like a reserve league rather than uh, younger boys. So our youth team was, was full full of talent, you know, Josh Berlante, um, Zach Anderson, Ben Halloran, Chris Harold, um, Taj Minicon, James Brown, like we can keep going on. But, um, and, and our youth team did well. We, uh, and Clive, he was fond of coming to the games on the weekend. And um, yeah, that was when I was enjoying myself and breaking through the ranks and um, started to develop into uh, like a senior environment. And, and, and I was scoring some goals and hitting some forms. So, um, you know, leading up to, to that week, I got a call. We just come back from Newcastle um, in the youth game and it got called off. We flew all the, all the way down to Newcastle and got called off because um, it rained. It was too dangerous. So didn't play. Fly back uh, Sunday that night, got school on Monday um, and, yeah, finished the day off school, just, just chilling um, at a friend's place I was staying and I got this call from a random number and, and I answered, I was like, Okay. Hello. Hi, Mitch Deacon. 
He goes, Mitch, this is, this is Clive Palmer. How are you? Uh, <laughs> I was like, did not know what to do. Uh, yeah, good, Clive. Good, good. Um, and he was just, he just wanted to say, uh, Mitch, um, you know, you got, you're going to make your debut this weekend. Um, you know, deserved it, much, much deserved. And I was, I was buzzing. I was saying, thank you, Clive. And then he ended the phone call kind of saying, you know, yeah, you're going to lead the boys out as well. And I, I remember hearing those words, but honestly did not think too much of that. Um, I thought, you know, just go out there, give them some energy or something. But uh, yeah, so that was all good. Go to train on Tuesday. And, uh, and then Mir- Mirren Blyberg approaches me and, and, and uh, you know, goes, um, I guess you got the call from Clive and he explained, you know, what's happening. You're going to make your debut. And I was buzzing, excited. And then he said, uh, yeah, he also wants to make you captain. <laughs> this is my debut, by the way. Um, and, and it was massive. Uh, that moment I was just in shock. But at the same time, like, I'm still out there to play a game of football. It doesn't matter if I'm, if I'm wearing an armband or not. So, so um, it, it didn't really, the, the weight of it didn't really, um, you know, hit me just yet until I spoke to dad after and, and we kind of approached it. You know, I spoke about the situation and what, what it can entail and stuff and external things that carry on leading up to the game. Um, so, you know, I, I had to politely decline that. I tried to, but... Um, now nah, they were, you know, pretty uh, pretty adamant to what Clive was to, to keep that going. So throughout the week, it, it was a circus. It was it was insane. Um, you could imagine so the the highs of the high um, for that week. And yeah, look, man, I just at the end of the day, I was just happy to to go out there and play. Um, you know, make my A League debut along with uh, I think Jake Barkadesh as well made his debut then. Joshua Biolante, young midfielder. So it was just, it was just my youth team and friends, um, you know, bonding together even more just to to play in the A League. So, yeah, that that was the story. <laughs> what about some of those senior players in the Gold Coast setup? Did they have like encouraging words for you, or was the vibe a bit strange? You know, considering their senior players have played A League football before, and here's Clive Palmer, the owner, giving a seventeen-year-old what they think they should have got it was more more of the fact um you know the older boys they were, they were unbelievable uh, we're trying to protect it you know um because you know getting thrown out in the deep end uh, now i'm a bit older and i, I realize um uh, you know these things can can make or break a player ultimately sometimes um but i guess i was so young and naive and full of energy that wasn't that wasn't going to happen to me but um, you know, uh, definitely see their perspective um, right now. Uh, back then, was was definitely trying to protect me. Not so much. Um, not no one trying to you know be like, yeah, I should be captain. Why is this kid happen? No, nothing like that. It was just sticking together, um, come, becoming closer as you know the people in the club there, from from the coaching staff to the senior players to to the boys involved in that situation, sticking close together, and and sticking to the plan that we had to execute in the game. So. At the end of the day, it didn't matter what happened. If we won or played a good game of football, no one's going to really care at the, you know, after that. So, um, you know, Christian Rees was, was massive. Um, uh, yeah, uh, who else? A couple other players. Um, but, yeah, Christian Rees was, was big, you know, taking me under his arm. And um, as well, we kind of collectively uh, with Mike Mulvey, address the team saying, you know, Christian Rees will kind of be doing the captain's role, you know, um, as it should. And I'll just be wearing the armband. Uh, so, yeah, no, it, it, it was good. Uh, honestly, credit to the boys and, and whoever, whoever was there at that situation handled, you know, protect me and, and look up for boys. So I think we did. It was a, yeah, they did a good job. And it wasn't too long after that match that you scored your mm-hmm. first professional goal. So do you remember that goal? If so, can you talk us through it? Yeah, no, I remember that game. It was uh, Central Coast Mariners, the second game. Um, so we played, my debut and captain was in Amy Park, Melbourne Heart, just lost 1 0. Josh Brillante gave the ball away in midfield. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> uh, he doesn't do that anymore. But uh, um, the next game, uh, it was Central Coast Mariners, yeah. And they were, this is where the dominant era, you know, they were just smashing it, uh, the likes of Rockage. In back then, um, 
and I think it was Kwasnick, which is the goal scoring machine, but we came out on fire. Like there was no stopping us. Um, yeah. And, you know, we, we did some damage as young players and we came out on fire, didn't let them warm up into the game and we took it to them um, three, one early days. And I think they came back to, to draw the game three all, but that goal was just, um, yeah, I remember specifically the build up and everything and me being in the midfield um, and, and just, just in, embracing the moment going forward doing all these things um that Mike Mulvey had taught me and as well Ben Howland was was such a dribbler like he's he was unreal on the ball so it was just knowing my players as well around me and supporting them being in positions that I needed to be especially as a H for 10 being in the box and Benny Halloran um as well as good as he can dribble can can pick a pass too so he just made that um run back in the inside and I've kind of just snuck, snuck in there as I do. And he's just like played it to me. And I guess at that moment, all my training, all the things my dad had said, um, you know, coaches and you're in the box, you turn and shoot. All that just came back to that moment. As soon as that ball came, didn't know what was behind me, whatever, just touch, pass, like <laughs> it was weak piss shot. But like, you know, just accuracy on fire, just um, rolled in the bottom corner. So yeah, that was uh, that was a moment. I think um, you know that really felt like I belonged uh, in that environment. Uh, I was actually assistant captain. Cheers, Clive, with that game. With that game. So uh, when I scored, um, Swady holds the cup, captain's armband over my head <laughs> on that one. So yeah, it was it was scenes. But um, nah, coming to the end of that Gold Coast team, I'm glad we can give the Gold Coast United fans something to you know cheer cheer, cheer about. So. And just how difficult did you find the step up from playing in a national youth league to the A-League? Um, like the, not it, it definitely is, it definitely is a step up, but it's nothing, it's nothing new. Um, you do come across senior players um, all over the world. So it's not the senior players that have come and grown up playing in the Australian um, where you come across senior players that play in different competitions, professional competitions, that you see the tricks, you know, the that that next level of, of knowing how to win a game, um, the 50-50. So um, all those things were was the biggest step up, um, just the intelligence of the play. Um, you know, uh, even though I'd be quicker, or fitter, younger, or stronger, um, when it came to those players, the senior players knew how to put themselves in a better position. So you, so you just had to adapt and, and uh, compete in that way. So it wasn't too much of a step up football-wise. It was just more so um, the end product and, and, and doing what you need to do to, to get what, you know, the team, get the team, get the, uh, you know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in, in your first couple of games as a professional, was there any players that you come across that you thought, man, these guys are the real deal, you know, players that go through a really hard time that was just the class above? I just stepping up, like, I was, again, surrounded by some superstars in the league. Um, Jason Colino, Dama Traore. Um, uh, you know, we had some Brazilians as well, Anderson, Milson. Um, you know, these were just unbelievable players. Um, so... So putting myself in those positions and those environments and, and just getting run around, you know, like it's a, it's a process to everything. So you kind of, you learn your position, but at the same time, you, you have to be taking notes. You have to be seeing why um, these players are stronger or why they're better, why they're doing things better than you. Um, so you can do that and compete as well. So yeah, you know, someone like Adama Traore, who was just, insanely athletically superior than us um you know it wasn't for for no reason though it wasn't just genetics or whatever he worked hard in the gym you know he worked on his balance he worked on his pass and his ball speed things like that so um yeah it was really it was really just taking at your you know um your talent to the next level and work on it and, and from that hard work and um that was the biggest difference now, final question about Gold Coast United and then we'll move on. So as fans, um, with the media, we've heard some crazy stories 
We've seen some crazy things, but we've never quite known exactly what's going, going on in Gold Coast United under Clive Palmer's ownership. So as a player, just what was it like being at the club during that time? It's funny, like, uh, the more I get asked this question, um, the more I realise how, how wild it was because that was my first professional environment, right? So I did not know anything else. Um, but yeah, it wasn't normal for, for a league, uh, the things that were happening behind the scenes or, um, some meetings, especially when you're, you're in the senior team environment, um, towards the end, a lot, a lot was happening with the FFA and, and we had like, you know, surprise meetings for whatever to meet at this resort or, um, wait for Clive Palmer and, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it was some wild things that happened. Um, probably the, the, the craziest thing that happened was, it was uh, not the captaincy thing. It was we, I think, in the youth game. So Clyde Palmer came to one of the games and he, he loved it, <laughs> you know, just for some random park uh, in Gold Coast on a Sunday afternoon, hot. And um, he would come and watch the games and we were playing Perth Glory at the time. And we were down 4-0 at halftime. It's like crazy, 4-0 at halftime. Anyway, we come back and we win 6-4, 6-5. Something like that. It was, it was great. Um, and and then Clive hops down from the stands, and while we're sitting in the middle of the pitch at the end of the game, he walks in, and he just he says, "Boys, just wanted to say that was unbelievable, um, like the best game of football he's watched." Um, and because of that, uh, I'm going to take you guys to Fiji at the end of the season. <laughs> Something like that. It was just like uh, with the first team. If the first team, you know, do well or, or something, but he he was so happy. He was like, right, "You guys are all gonna, you know, I'm gonna take you to Fiji. I'm gonna shout your trip at the end of the year to Fiji." And we we're just like, "What?" <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, the season goes on, uh, and he followed through with his uh, with his calls. So he ended up um, shouting first team boys and youth team boys, whoever did want to go. Uh, you know, a trip to Fiji hotel for a week and stuff. Um, yeah, so that was a few of the, you know, the pros and stuff that that came along with, um, you know, playing with Clive, uh, playing under Clive. But, yeah, he he was just, you know, had – I heard stories as well. Um, I never was there, you know, um, at his resort, you know, that him flying down in his helicopter, coming to, to for some meetings and stuff. So, uh, look, yeah, just uh, some ways and some crazier stories. But – um, yeah, that's that's all I knew as a young player growing up. And yeah, yeah, I guess it was, you know, some stuff was a bit, a bit excessive. Um, <laughs> but yeah, interesting time. <laughs> now, after Gold Coast United, you moved on to fellow A-League side, Newcastle Jets. Unfortunately, uh, pretty much at the start of your Jets career, you had two very serious injury setbacks doing your ACL. So as a player, how hard is it mentally to overcome those sort of hurdles of such big injuries pretty much in a row? Uh, very, very. Um, but you can't, you can't quit. You can't, you know, just say I'm done. Um, so it was a lot of uh, learning other aspects about myself um, than just an athlete or my physicality or things like that. It was real had to look in uh, within myself mentally um, to put myself in the best position to, to be as consistent as I can um, through, the, through the rehab process because um, you know, you, at the same time, you only really had one shot at it um, to get back right as best as you can. Um, it's, uh, you know, post-surgery and you know, post-injuries. Um, but at the same time, I was in a professional environment that gave me everything. Uh, to support me through it so um yeah as a young kid a very social kid as well um it was pretty it was, it was hard to to try and, and put myself in a um uh like a routine or program that was just myself for six eight nine months um and i did that uh the first time with my right leg my right knee did that um you know, solidly, I was embraced it and and came back probably better than uh, than I was before the injury, my first one. 
Um, but then th- the second time happened, you know, it's three weeks come back, um, full, full play, full training and everything. And, and then the way the second time happened was just like extremely unlucky from a tackle, um, you know, and dislocating the knee and, and doing some da- damage that, that hit me harder. It was, you know, physically more trauma and then the knee than the first one. Uh, but as well, mentally, I think that as well, it was, it was more trauma with myself. So it was a lot harder. Um, and I, yeah, you just had to just put yourself, you know, I was trying to, that second time trying to be a person or a player that I, I wasn't, you know, and then trying to find myself and my identity as a player again after injury again like I, I was even even lo- like further I was lost even more you know so um it was difficult times but I drew inspiration from from you know people like Derek Rose or um, Daniel Menzel was down here in, in Melbourne um who's gone four or five in you know, knee injuries himself so yeah people have it worse than you but um you know like at the end of the day I uh, wouldn't be the person I am right now um you know, playing football, assume the things I do before the game, pre-season to put myself in the best position physically. Um, now these things, I don't, I wouldn't have done that if I didn't go through the injuries I had. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a crazy point. And, I, uh, and having those injuries back then at, at that time of my career, but regret, you know, wouldn't would do change anything. Um, you know, the person I am very happy and, and proud of and, um, continue, you know, to help people in that same position, um, same boat as well, because it's not the end, you know. So, um, yeah, yeah. After five years with the Jets, you left for um, the NPL with a number of high name players, um, big name players such as James Brown from Gold Coast United. When you made that move, did you feel like there was a lot of weight off your shoulders, a lot of pressure off you, and you could just enjoy football again? So dropping out of um, you know, the A League was 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 interesting time as well because, um, you know, I decided to go to NPL to to Nana uh, which is an NPL as well. And my my love for the game um, disappeared, and um, it was more important for me to to find love and to get in touch with that enjoyment again, which I always had, you know, since playing in Vanuatu. Um, and and I and I did that with Nana Wadding and James James Brown was there at the time too, and we just enjoyed ourselves and uh, played some good football uh, with Nana Wadding. Um, and then when you get to a point, you know, me and James put in so much time in in um, our football and uh, uh, I guess high intensity environment. Um, you know, those it's it's hard to to be happy and comfortable, especially when you got that fire, and especially you're young enough to play football. So. Um, you know, we we eventually found ourselves back to to Hume City, and yeah, we just pushed we just pushed each other. Um, you know, Brownie, uh, he he was he ended up scoring a few goals. He'll tell you, glad he tell you, he scored a few goals uh, more than me. Um, but you know, I really really embraced um, you know having a personality like Brownie in the team because he he does bring that old school vibe um, if you're not running if you're not putting the effort whatever and it, or if he's running past you you know if, um tracking back like he will let you know so it wasn't for me just trying to um you know get those individual awards or accolades it was really um learning or finding um something new about myself as a player and, and learning how to win um learning how to to because npl victoria down here is, is quite physical so it wasn't a walk of park as well. So it's putting my body again in those, you know, the injuries I've had in those situations, but like there was nothing better than earning, earning a win, um, you know, and giving it your all as well. So we, we ended up having a good team uh, with Hume and, and unlucky with lockdown and a couple of things as well. We had a good run, um, you know, helping Hume get their first over trophy, um, you know, the Doherty cup, um, uh, big run in the FFA Cup as well. Um, yeah, and then I think that next season, again, we, we started the season five wins from five on top of the table, best start Hume's ever done, but um, COVID kicked in. So it's been unlucky with, with all that. But, um, yeah, I've honestly been in an environment like Hume City. It's just been unbelievable. Um, 
the culture that we've got there and um or the culture that is there uh you know, with nick hegarty and what he's created it's it, it's been great um and now we have you know the lights of other players that have been in the a-league uh, mark ochang um michael weir just signed to newcastle jets from our keeper um so you, you know that environment is is we we did create some sort of environment right that demanded a, a standard and that's what at the end of the day that's what it's all about um and, and getting that success in that way so uh yeah it, it's been a healthy place a, a healthy place to be at it's human i just can't wait to keep learning and, and seeing new things from myself as well and, and hopefully bring success um to the teams that i go and play with so so on to international football, you played for Australia's youth teams, 17s, 19s and 20s, but currently you're a Vanuatu international. So what was it that finally made you decide to um, appear for your country of birth national team, Vanuatu? Oh, look, um, you know, the goal was to, to, to play for the soccer is and get that chance um, for sure. But you know my my journey with uh, football journey wasn't wasn't to be, um, and it did it did it, you know it took a long time um, for me because if you represent a, a, another country um, in a senior level, you, you can't represent another one as well. So in the junior ranks, I was you know with Australia and trying to eventually make that Socceroos team, but um, whatever happened happened. Um, so that opportunity didn't look, you know, like a reality. And um, kind of, I kind of, to be honest, didn't give too much thought about Vanuatu. It wasn't like I was chasing, uh, chasing that, even though it is, you know, my, my hometown and um, it has been talked about in the past, but it was only, you know, a possibility, you know, a few, few later on when I was down here. So um, I was like, okay, uh, you know, uh, Vanuatu appointed a coach. Paul Munster, who was amazing, um, came from Ireland and um, he's now coaching in Indonesian leagues as well. But he was great and proactive, and he he just made you know the wheel the wheel spin with that whole um, with with me coming to represent Vanuatu and and yeah he he made it happen um, and it was a special thing. It was a it was a special thing. Again, I talk about you know I wouldn't change anything from my past because that that moment where I was able to to walk out um, and represent my country in, in front of my my family um, and that park on in that stadium I used to go and watch as a young boy that like it hit home there's no no better feeling so um, I know as a young kid from Vanuatu I looked up to to the people that were pushing even even the even the Vanuatu athletes that were playing in New Zealand that was massive you know that was massive so me going into that arena and put myself there and having thousands of kids uh look at me and and say it's a possibility do what I've done like you know that is it that's it for me like that was mad like that's that's the ultimate goal not earning millions of dollars or whatever it's really making a difference and um you know, letting kids dream um, and hopefully I can help push them and, and, you know, Vanuatu can produce players and I can take the next level, next step because there's so much talent out there in the islands. It's crazy. And speaking of goals, uh, what are your goals and what are you hoping to achieve for the rest of 2021? <clears throat> um, we have a FFA Cup game um, still going on, um, but... Yeah, so my goal is to to finish finish the season um, as best as we can. Um, you know, we did, we put in the whole we put in the work this year with so many interruptions. It's this and that. I feel like you know it's even more reason to to just really go for it. Um, COVID's definitely put things in perspective where it's mad playing football, but not everyone gets a chance to, to win something at a senior level. Um, to accomplish these things um, while you're while you're young, while you can't, you know. So, um, yeah, my my goal is just to, to just put myself in the best position physically um, to enjoy myself. Because when I when I'm when I'm mentally and physically right, you know, I play some good football. So, um, 
yeah, we got some FFA Cup games coming up. Uh, hopefully win that. Hopefully they put on the Doherty Cup because we're in the final again. Hopefully we can bring Hume City another uh, trophy. If if the games go for that, that's that's probably my biggest goal is, is win another trophy for Hume. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Mitch. It's been an absolute pleasure. No, Shannon, honestly, unreal. Appreciate the chat. Um, and you reaching out as well um, to hear my story too because – uh, you know, every once in a while, I get someone uh, wanted to talk to talk to me about it, and yeah, it's it's. I think these things are important to to uh, share these stories because yeah, some crazy things. But uh, no, I appreciate you, Shannon, and, and taking the time to to speak to me too. Thank you for watching. This video is sponsored by Arrow Sport. Go to the link in the description, and the friendly team at Arrow Sport will help you create your own football dream jersey, whether it's starting from scratch or using one of their many templates on their website, creating a jersey with Arrow Sports is easy and prices start from just $50. Go to www.arrowsport.com.au and make your football kit dreams become a reality.